Hi, I'm just gonna give you a quick breakdown of how to grade the papers. So there's just a couple things to think about outside of the normal rubric. The first one, more comments are always better than less comments. So the more you write, the more comments you give them, the feedback, the positive feedback, the negative feedback, it's important to remember that sometimes you get caught up in giving feedback and all of it is always negative. You definitely wanna give positive feedback as well. But the more feedback you give, the students generally feel better about themselves and the situation that they're in and what they're reading. One of the things that's always vital in all of my classes whenever I give a paper is that everything is connected. Everything should be supported by something else in the paper. Maybe they're talking about what they did for a product or what the product was price was and you'd say, well, we chose this price because the customers are this or we chose this price because the competitors are this. Or if you're talking about recommendations that they should do, you say, well, we did this recommendation because our customers like this. Or we do this recommendation because this supports the kind of company that we are. Or that we did this recommendation because of the environment that we're in. But everything is always supported by something earlier in the paper. Nothing should feel random or really out of place. That's one of the things you really want to avoid when something just suddenly appears in the paper. You often want to think like, where did this come from? And that usually means that there's probably some points off because it's not supported. So whenever things appear to be random, they kind of like, what? why is this here? That's often a negative that you want to make sure you you remember. And also make sure you tell them, hey, you wrote this thought in here. I'm not really sure where this came from and this isn't supported. This doesn't represent the so-and-so earlier that you talked about. One of the important things to remember, if you give a 97% and you give an 85%, and 97 does not equal 85. And what I mean by that is like, if you only need a few comments when you're giving for feedback for a 97, because those students are generally pretty happy with their paper. But when you give an 85, that means you need you know that many more comments. You have to really sell the grade. You want them to feel like when they're reading the feedback that, hey, I actually am thankful that I got this grade because potentially I could have got a worse grade, right? So you have to always think of that when you're reading it. When you're reading it, you should want to read it from a student's point of view. If I read this and I look at the grade that I got, does it match? Does it make sense? Like, yeah, okay, I think that's fair grade from the feedback. If I leave things out and it doesn't represent it, then I start thinking like, well, I got one for this, and I got one for this, and I got one for that. Those three things, does that equal 15 points off or 15%? That doesn't make sense. And then you're, you're gonna be annoying, you're gonna email back for and one explanation of why. So you always have to think like every point you take off, you need to have, here's why the point is off, and then you need to include those in all in the feedback. So the students read it, like I said, they almost feel like, oh, I'm so glad I got an 85 and not an 80 kind of mentality. So you wanna oversell it, right? Definitely wanna oversell it. The last point that I wanna make is about the grammar. Even though sometimes when you read papers, there's a lot of grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes and they can be very frustrating. Maybe you have run-on sentences or massive paragraphs and things like that. You have to remember this is a business paper. It's not an English paper. And generally, it's a small percentage of the points that you can only take off for grammar. You can't continually repunish them over and over and over again in every single section because suddenly, next thing you know, they got an 80%. You know, of that 80%, 15% of the off was for grammar. Well, was 15% was only worth five points. So you really have to look through it and focus on the content and not let the other stuff take it away from you. And the same thing can be said when someone writes really, really well. You, you don't wanna get caught up like, wow, this paper's written so well, but actually they, they missed a lot of stuff. They didn't really talk about the things that were assigned, right? They just wrote it really well and it was smooth to read. You can't keep giving them like 100%, 100%, 100%. And in reality, the content's not very good, but it was, they just wrote the paper really well. You always want to focus on the content as much as possible. And don't continually punish them or don't look through things because it was written well, one or the other. All right, so I think these tips should help you. They're, they're not based on a rubric or anything. They're just general tips to, to keep track and keep like kind of reminding yourself when you're grading the papers. Grading papers isn't easy. Even if you've done it a million times, you still have to remind yourself of these little tips like, you know, don't get carried away and take so many points off for grammar or make sure I look at the content, focus on the content. Or if they get a low grade, why did they get the low grade? And then I have to include that many comments into like the feedback when I get back. So when they read it, they're like, oh, okay, this feels good. All right, I thank you so much for your time. I hope these tips help you. And I really appreciate all the time and energy you put into our class. Take care.